In this video, we're going to work through the Alice tutorial on scene building. When we're done, we're going to have a scene that looks similar to this. We have some characters, we have some props. Um, yours may not look exactly like this, but it should be close. So let's go ahead and take a few minutes to set this up. Let's go ahead and jump into Alice. You can find the shortcut to Alice on the desktop and start Alice by double clicking on it. And once it opens up, you should be presented with this screen. And this is where we get a chance to, to pick what world we want to start with. And in this case, we're going to start with Wonderland. I'm going to click on it. You can either double click on it or click on it once and choose OK to open it. It may take a few seconds for Alice to open up, but once it does, you should see the main setup screen here. We're going to talk about these areas here, my first method, and the procedures here another time. But for right now, we're going to focus on this setup scene area here. So we are going to click on the setup scene button. And this is the place where we get to add our different characters uh, and the props we're going to use in our scene. So let's go ahead and set this up. So the first thing we're going to do is find the theme we're going to use. And you don't have to do this every time. You could just go straight to these different classes here. But since we're kind of doing a demonstration, we're going to use the Wonderland theme that's built into Alice. I'm going to click on the Browse Gallery by Theme. And I want the Wonderland theme. And you notice things are arranged in alphabetical order. So the Wonderland theme is probably all the way down at the end, and here it is. So if I click on it, it shows me all the different characters and props from Wonderland. So I'm going to add a few things here. I'm going to start with adding a tea table as the centerpiece of my scene that I'm setting up. So again, that's alphabetical, so it's probably going to be down near the end. I'm just going to drag down, and there's the tea table, and I'm going to double click on it to add it. And when I do it, it gives me an opportunity to put in a new name if I want, but T-Table is fine for this, and I click on OK. Whenever you double-click on an object, it puts it in the center of the window, in the center of the world. So I double-clicked on the T-Table, it ends up in the center. So double-clicking isn't the only way to add uh, an object to our scene. We can also drag it, and let's show that method. So I'm going to kind of move to the beginning. I'm going to add Alice to our scene. So I'm going to click and drag, and notice that when it gets to the, the cursor gets to the scene itself, I get this yellow bounding box. And that shows where the Alice character is going to go. And I'm going to go ahead and move it close to the end of the table, and I can always get it perfect later. So I'm going to let go of the mouse, and it's asking me which version of Alice I want. I'll pick the new the Wonderland Alice, but it doesn't matter. You can pick either one for your scene. I'll leave the name as it is and click OK. And now Alice is in the scene. And you can see I have this yellow circle around it. And if I click on it and move it, it rotates Alice around. OK, let's go ahead and add a couple more things to our scene. I'm going to add a Cheshire Cat version. So I'm just going to click and drag it in. And I don't want just the grin. I want the whole cat. So I'll click that. Again, leave the name the same. Click OK. And maybe I want to move it back a little bit, so I could just click and drag, and I'll move it back near the table. The last thing I want to do is add a chair for my characters to sit in. Uh, but you see that there is no chair in the Wonderland theme. It's, the chair is kind of a generic thing. So I'm going to go to this Search Gallery tab, click on it, and I'm going to type in Chair. And you can see that it shows me all the different chairs I can choose. And I can pick whichever one I want. Um, I'll take this colonial blue chair. That looks kind of fancy for a tea party. And click on OK. And you can see, because I double clicked, it puts it in the center of the, of the scene, which is also where the table happens to be. So I'm going to go ahead and move that by clicking and, whoops, that rotates it. Let's go ahead and click on this Move button here to move my chair out of the scene. So I'll just click on it and drag it to this end of the table. OK, and so now I have most of the things I want in my scene positioned. And now I need to be a little bit more specific about exactly where I want them to go. So again, I want Alice at, this, at the end of this table. So I'm going to have her move a little bit closer. Since I already have the Move button selected, if I click on Alice, I can see I can move up, left and right, and then backwards and forwards. So if I just click on Alice and drag, I can move left and right and back and forward, but not up and down. So I'll just get her close to the edge of the table, 
Looks pretty good there. I'll click on the chair to kind of get move it close to the edge of the table. Looks okay there. And then finally, I want to move the Cheshire Cat kind of above the table so it looks like it's hovering. So I'm going to move it back a little bit so it's in the table. And then I, I kind of want to move it above. Again, it looks like it's hovering. So I'm going to wait till I see this arrow above it. And if I click and drag, notice I'm moving it straight up. And now it looks like the cat is kind of above the table. So now I have all the characters in my scene, but I still need to fine tune their positions a little bit more. I kind of want Alice to be facing the table, and I want the chair to be facing the table as well, uh, so it looks like someone could sit down there. So let's take care of that. There's a couple of ways to do it. The first way, I'm just going to click back on the rotation button, and then click on Alice. There we go. And notice that Alice has this red ring here, and also a blue ring and kind of a gray ring. I'm going to worry about this red ring for right now. If I click and drag, notice it kind of rotates Alice. I can rotate her around that axis. And I'm going to kind of rotate it till it looks like she's facing the table. So one way to rotate a character is to click on the rotation and then click and drag on one of these axes. There's another way to do it, and that's with these things called one shots. And again, these, this menu only appears when I'm setting up the scene. So I'm going to have the chair face the table by using a one shot. So to do that, I'm going to first click on the chair. And notice that now this chair is selected. I'm going to click on one shots. I'm going to go to procedures. And notice there's this the, a number of different procedures. I'm going to use the procedure turn to face. And again, since I'm starting with this chair, I want it to turn to face the tea table. So if I click on it, you can see the chair faces the table. And again, it looks like it's facing the, the, the center of the table, so it looks like it's off a little bit. So if I want to fine tune it, I could always do it a little more with this, but I'll leave this for right now. Okay, so now that we have that a little bit better, you'll notice that the Cheshire Cat, the top of his head's kind of cut off, and it looks like we're a little far away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my camera so that my scene looks a little bit more interesting. So these buttons down here are what move my camera. So if I click on this one, I get a little bit closer. This one moves the camera up and down. So if I click on it, moves the camera down. This moves the camera up. And actually that looks pretty good right there. Because this looks so good right now, I want to save this camera setup uh, just in case I mess up my scene, which I do all the time if I click on the wrong thing. So I'm going to click on this camera over here on the left. And then I have this thing called camera markers. And right now it shows me I have zero camera markers. I'm going to click on that and then click on Add Camera Marker. I can give it a name. I can, I can call it a Starting Camera. And just click on OK. And now I have my Starting Camera Marker. So if, for instance, I am trying to click on the Cheshire Cat and I accidentally move the whole scene just by dragging in the wrong way, which is very easy to do, I can click right back here on this icon and it moves the camera back to my starting point. So sometimes it's helpful to have these camera markers built in. So let's add a couple more objects to our scene and look at some different ways to align them up. So we're going to go back to our theme. We're still in Wonderland. I'm going to go to the beginning and look at this tea set. And I'm going to add a few objects from the tea set. I'm going to add a new teapot right, by double clicking. And it puts it in the center here. I'm going to add a new saucer and I'm going to try to drag that to close to my table. Uh, let's see, I'll pick the playing card saucer. That one looks kind of nice. Again, you can pick whichever one you want for your scene. And then I'll drag a teacup to my scene. And I'll choose, well, I'll choose the playing card teacup to have a nice match set. Okay, so now I have a teapot that's currently under my table, and I have a, a cup and saucer that I would I want on my table. I actually want all three of these objects on my table. As we've seen, however, dragging the objects around can be kind of hard to position exactly where we want to. So we're going to take advantage of the one shots to position them more precisely, and then we can make minor corrections. So let's go ahead and start with the teapot. We want the teapot to be sitting on top of the table in the middle of it. 
Well, since we double clicked it, we know it's in the middle of the world in the same way that the table is. So all we need to do is move it up. So I'm going to go to One Shots, Procedures. I'm going to go to Place, Above, this tea table. And if I do that, you can see the teapot is now sitting on the table. If I just click somewhere to deselect it, it's sitting right on the table. It makes it very, very nice. Let's do the same thing with the uh, saucer here. Let's start with the saucer. I want it also to be sitting on the table. I'm going to want it over on this edge in a few minutes. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go to One Shots, Procedures, Place, Above, Table. It moves it to the center of the table. I actually want it over here. So if I click on Move, now I can use and drag the arrow, being careful not to drag the teapot, and drag the, the saucer over to this edge of the table. And the last thing I want to do is have the teacup sitting on top of the saucer. This one's actually pretty easy too, uh, but instead of aligning the teacup to the table, I'm going to align it with the saucer. So again, I'm going to go to my One Shots menu, and then Procedures. And then I'm going to use Move and Orient to this saucer, and the teacup goes right to the saucer. And in a much easier way, I've taken advantage of the one shots to precisely position my objects. Okay, the last thing we're going to do is we are going to add one more character and have them sit at our table. Before I do that, however, I'm going to save my project to make sure I don't lose anything. So I'm going to go to the File menu and choose Save. And I'm going to call it um, Alice Tutorial and click on Save. And the default location is fine. OK, as we said before, we're going to add one more character to our scene. So I'm going to go back down here to my gallery. I'm going to click on Wonderland. And I'm going to add a Mad Hatter. And again, it doesn't matter how we add this, but I'm just going to drag it in so we can see that again. I'll drag it over here near the chair, since we're going to end up with the Mad Hatter in the chair. And I'm going to click on OK. Now, if we did the Mad Hatter like this, it wouldn't look very natural him sitting. So we're going to change it so it looks like he's in a sitting position. And the way we do that is we need to bend his legs forward. Yeah. So if I go to Mad Hatter, whoops, if I go to One Shots and Procedures, I don't see anything about just specifically legs, which is going to be a problem. But if I click on this Mad Hatter and scroll down to this, now I see I can uh, look at each uh, joint on the Mad Hatter individually. So I'm going to start by selecting the right hip. And now all the procedures I have have to do with the right hip. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the right hip backward 0.25. And you can see as it turns this backward, it has the, the effect of having the leg come up. So let's do the same thing for the Mad Hatter. Well, I'm going to choose Get Left Hip this time. Click on One Shots, Procedures. I'm going to turn the left hip eesh, backward, 0.25. And now it looks like the Mad Hatter's sitting. Of course, it looks like he's sitting on air, but we can fix that. So let's go back to the Mad Hatter. I'm going to select the main Mad Hatter, not the arrow this time. Oops, let me go back. Ah, sorry, let me start over again. Let me click on the Mad Hatter, click on this Mad Hatter, and I'm going to use the same move and orient to that I did for the teacup and saucer. So I'm going to go to Procedures, move and orient to the chair. Now if I click on it, it looks like he's sitting in the chair. I'm going to click anywhere just to deselect everything, and here is our scene, which should look very similar to our beginning scene. So hopefully this tutorial has given you an idea of how to add objects to a scene and position them in, in the way you want. Next we're going to start taking a look at some basic programming.